Hello everyone. Thank you for joining us for this series of professional learning shorts on teacher tips for family communication. My name is Taya Haller and I'll be guiding you through this video module, Foundational Frameworks, Family Roles, and the Joining Process. The overarching goal of this series is to strengthen communication between teachers and families in order to support and enhance student learning. The information and activities in this PL short have been aligned to the CEC and Cedar Center's high leverage practices and New Jersey's professional teaching standards referenced at the end. Because we know that professional learning must be interactive and relevant for it to be meaningful, the objectives of this video module are based on a praxis framework, inviting you into a process of reflecting on your current practices and beliefs regarding the roles families play in their children's education, describing how educators can empower families through the joining process, and determining your next steps in facilitating the joining process and supporting families in their essential roles. There will be moments when we ask you to pause the video in order to engage more fully in this process. Ideally, this process of reflection, information, and action is not solitary, but communal. Therefore, there will be moments when we encourage you to connect with others as part of this process as well. With that in mind, you'll get the most out of this PL short if you have the following resources readily on hand to mark up. The Communicating with Families Inventory, which you use during the initial reflection in our series preview, and the Professional Learning Guide that corresponds with this video. Feel free to pause the video now to print these resources or open them with a PDF annotation tool. Let's start with reflection. Feel free to use your PL guide as you consider these ideas. How would you describe the roles families play in their children's education and learning experiences? How do you ensure that families feel welcomed in your classroom, honored, and connected to their child's learning? And lastly, how does your school ensure that families feel welcomed, honored, and connected to the larger learning community? Feel free to pause the video while you complete this reflection exercise. If you are engaging in this series with others, this would be a great discussion to have together. Feel free to pause the video to exchange ideas with a colleague. As we turn our attention to educational research, feel free to use your PL guide to jot down any notes. Just as we teach our students to adopt a questioning stance when they approach nonfiction text, we should approach research and new information in the same way. Using the big questions proposed by Kylene Beers and Robert E. Probst can help us critically reflect on what's been presented. So we'll provide time for you to consider these questions. What surprised you? What changed, challenged, or confirmed what you already knew or had experienced? Educational research points to distinct roles of families in their children's education. For example, the Flamboyant Foundation identifies five essential roles that families play. These include communicating high expectations to their children, monitoring their children's performance, supporting their children's learning at home, guiding their children's path, and advocating for their children's needs. Numerous educational research studies support the significance of these roles and suggest ways that schools can partner with families to fulfill them. For example, a meta-analysis of 51 research studies on parent and community involvement concluded that schools should provide families with information about what their children need to learn. Furthermore, information about significant milestones in a child's academic, behavioral, and social-emotional journeys empowers families to communicate high expectations each step of the way. This meta-analysis also found that students transitioning from elementary school to middle school reported that parent involvement, such as talking to them about school and checking homework, had a significant impact on their grades. Communicating with families about assignments and class activities empowers them to better initiate these conversations with their children and monitor their performance. In addition, a synthesis of research projects and interviews with families of children with disabilities revealed that parents want educators to provide them with resources such as data on their children's progress. It's difficult for them to monitor their child's performance without this information. Therefore, schools should regularly communicate with families regarding student successes and strengths, areas in which students are working toward improvement, and assignments and class activities, as well as provide data about student performance using visuals and explanations that families can understand. In addition, the aforementioned meta-analysis found that interventions that engaged families in supporting their children's learning at home were linked to higher student achievement. At the pre-K and kindergarten levels, these interventions often included parenting education, modeling activities for parents, and providing at-home learning activities or books for families to read together. At the elementary and middle school level, 
These interventions usually entailed sharing tips about how to help children with their schoolwork and providing helpful resources or parent training. Interviews with parents at an elementary school in an urban, low socioeconomic setting that boasted of over 90% parental participation revealed a similar theme. Many of the parents expressed a desire to be more effective in helping their children with schoolwork, noting that they wish they had more support in how to do the assignments, how to provide helpful feedback, or how to support their child's unique learning needs. This was most prevalent among parents who were unable to participate in at-school activities. Intentional, ongoing communication about how to support their child's learning at home may be even more important for these families because they have less exposure to cues and information that would increase their capacity to help with learning activities at home. For example, these parents weren't able to see children's completed work on the walls, overhear conversations about homework assignments, observe what children were learning in the classroom, or have informal conversations with teachers and other parents. The meta-analysis also concluded that schools should communicate with families about how they can plan for college, post-secondary education, and a career with their child, as well as provide resources or programs that build their understanding of how the educational system works. Furthermore, interviews with families of children with disabilities reveal that parents want teachers to provide them with information that supports their understanding of the special education process. The same would be true for any other services available to students and the process behind obtaining those services, such as 504 plans, enrichment programs, interventions, work-study programs, clubs, and sports. This information empowers families to best guide their children's path throughout their school year and prepare them for adulthood. All of this information enables families to better understand their child's experience in school and therefore advocate more effectively for their children's needs. The meta-analysis concluded that schools should give families a voice in what happens to their children, which requires them to create seats for families at decision-making tables and opportunities for families to give input at parent-teacher conferences and other meetings throughout the year. Let's pause to process this information and how it compares with your own experience regarding the roles families play in their children's education. Did anything surprise you? Did anything change or challenge what you already knew or have experienced? Did anything confirm your own experiences and knowledge? Feel free to pause the video while you add to your appeal guide research notes. Extensive interviews with families in an urban low socioeconomic school with high parental engagement revealed an important caveat to our understanding of these roles and that many parents were involved in their children's education in ways that were not recognized by school staff with a narrow definition of what legitimate participation looks like. However, these interviews also pointed to a concept in family systems literature that can guide teachers through, toward a more inclusive definition of family engagement through authentic relationships. That is a framework known as the joining process. This is a process through which staff members welcome families into the school, honor their participation, and connect with families through a clear focus on their children. Welcoming creates a sense that families belong to the school and the school belongs to them. The sense of belonging can inspire families to be more engaged in their children's education. Schools can create the sense of belonging by demonstrating a sincere desire to include parents in school life, showcasing children's artwork on the walls, keeping the school clean, and providing signs or other information in languages that represent the demographics of the school community. Honoring families means recognizing their strengths and efforts, affirming their engagement styles and funds of knowledge, and applying family-centered practices. This cultivates an identity of being an important contributor to the school community, which then increases families' confidence in being part of their child's learning process. Schools can honor families by encouraging their participation on decision-making committees and projects, asking for their input and taking their ideas seriously, valuing their expertise, and forming personal connections with them. The connecting phase of the joining process means that schools connect with families through a clear focus on the children's learning and educational achievement. Educators can do this by sharing what students are learning, knowing their students' strengths and weaknesses, being transparent about available resources and services, and advocating for what students need to be successful. The result of the joining process is family empowerment. Families have an increased capacity to support their children's learning and are more excited about partnering with school staff. Because of its emphasis on truly honoring families, this process can also overcome the social capital disconnect that is too often a barrier 
between school staff and the families they serve due to historical power dynamics related to racial, ethnic, religious, socioeconomic, and linguistic differences. By fully recognizing, embracing, and leveraging all of the assets families bring to the school community. When thinking about what you learned about the joining process, did anything surprise you? Did anything change or challenge what you already knew or have experienced? Did anything confirm your own experiences and knowledge? If you are engaging in the series with others, this would be a great discussion to have together. Feel free to pause this video to jot down your responses or share them with a trusted colleague. We'll end by developing a short action plan. First, take a look at the Communicating with Families Inventory, Part 2. When considering the roles families play in their children's education and the three phases of the joining process, do any new vulnerabilities, strengths, needs, or supports come to mind? Feel free to pause the video to jot down any new thoughts that come to mind when you look back over these questions. Use this page on your appeal guide to map out the next steps you may take. As we recommend a couple of possible next steps, check off any actions that fit your needs and the needs of your students' families. One action step is to support families in their essential roles. Begin by evaluating your current family communication. Which roles are you already supporting through this communication and which roles could you support more? Then determine what information you may want to share with families to better equip them in one of those roles. For example, if you want to better support families in communicating high expectations to their children, you could share information about academic, behavioral, or social emotional milestones. To support families in monitoring their children's performance, share samples of student work and meaningful feedback. To support families as they support their children's learning at home, provide family activities that reinforce skills they're learning in class. Help families guide their children's path by sharing information about enrichment or supplemental opportunities. Or encourage families to advocate for their children by providing reflective questions in preparation for parent-teacher conferences so that they can have an active role in the meeting. Another action step is to facilitate the joining process by identifying one new thing you could do to welcome families, such as making personal phone calls in the beginning of the year or translating key information in families' preferred languages, honoring families, perhaps by providing opportunities for input in your class events or listening to their hopes and dreams for their child, and connecting families to their children's learning, maybe by describing what their child is learning in class or celebrating their child's successes. You likely thought of many other things you could do to support families' roles in their children's education and facilitate the joining process in your classroom. Based on your inventory of vulnerabilities and needs, along with our recommendations, what are your next steps? Be as specific as you can so that you have a clear, concrete plan in place. Include who in your professional learning community may be able to support you in this plan. Take a minute to pause the video if needed to think about and write down your next steps. Thank you for joining us. Keep the Communicating with Families inventory on hand for the Yale Shore in this series. If this is the last video you'll be watching in the series, please share your thoughts with us. Look for the Give It Feedback icon under this PL Short on the LRC South website. 